You don't need surgery, waist trainers, or any other unhealthy practice to achieve the hourglass figure look. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it the natural, healthy way. So two main things need to happen to achieve this hourglass figure look. We have to build muscle and we also have to get lean. The amount of muscle and leanness you achieve is going to be 100% dependent on the person because we are all very different and the hourglass figure look can honestly look different on one woman versus the other woman. So this really comes down to personal preference on what the hourglass figure look looks like for you because some women like the hourglass look that's a little more curvy and um, that has more body fat on themselves and then other women like the curvy look but they also want to be pretty lean especially in their midsection and when we talk about building muscle no ladies we are not talking about becoming a bodybuilder becoming manly unfortunately these are all fears that are associated with building muscle and weight training and it's a shame because weight training is what is going to give you this hourglass look guys this is how you're going to get this nice sexy look by weight training and by adding muscle to your frame okay i've been weight training for five years don't think i look like a man and to be honest it's very hard it's very very hard to achieve that bodybuilder look even the look that you see um in some women that have like a lot a lot of muscle that are female bodybuilders guys that's not going to happen okay it's going to take years of training for you to come close to that and honestly it's very hard to achieve that naturally too so please don't worry about that. That's not going to happen. I also hear a lot of people say that they don't want to build muscle. They just want to get toned and getting toned and building muscle is the exact same thing. Building muscle is mandatory to achieve this hourglass figure look the natural way. So what exactly do we need to build here in order to get the muscle in the right places? So we really want to focus on building our back, building our shoulders, because we have to first get that first layer of the triangle of this hourglass shape so building our top first and then we also want to focus on building our glutes and our quads in the lower part of our body in terms of our abs we don't technically want to grow our abs because then that's just going to cause your waist to get blockier which we don't want however we still can train our abs to get them some nice definition but we're not going to train our abs the same way we're going to be training our back shoulders glutes and quads when it comes to abs i usually just stick to body weight exercises and some light light weight so if you want to add a little bit of resistance using bands or some light weights that's fine as well but don't be going super heavy with the abdominal exercises, guys, because again, that's just going to cause that muscle to grow and we don't really want that for our abs. Now, in terms of our lats, shoulders, glutes, and quads, we wanna be doing exercises that target those muscle groups. So you wanna make sure you're doing shoulder presses, lateral raises, lat pull downs, rows, pull ups. And then for our glutes and quads, exercises like squats, glute bridges, hip thrusts, seated abductions, walking lunges, Bulgarian split squats. These are all great exercises to target your glutes and your quads. And these aren't the only muscle groups you guys should be training. Like I don't want you guys to neglect your hamstrings, your arms and your chest because those are all still very important muscles to train overall. You don't wanna have muscle imbalances and you wanna have a very proportional look, right? Just because I'm talking about these four muscle groups today doesn't mean I'm saying not to train arms, chest or anything like that too because everything is so important. You have to train everything for a balanced proportional look, but today we're just really hyper-focusing on these four muscle groups that really make the hourglass figure stand out. The way in which you train has to be centered around progressive overload. All progressive overload means is increasing the demands on your muscle over time so they can actually grow. I have my clients repeat the same workouts at least for like four weeks at a time because that's how you're gonna get stronger and that's how you're going to actually achieve this progressive overload. There's a few different variables here when we talk about progressive overload. We can look at the amount Amount of load that's actually on the bar. We can also look at the sets and the reps that we do, time under tension, and also the frequency of how much you were actually training. So a really quick example of each of those. The first one for load, let's say we do 10 pounds one week and the next week we add a pound or two, continuously adding more weight to the bar, to the dumbbells, to the cable machine, using a heavier resistance band. These are all ways to increase the load. And that might not happen every single week because as you get more advanced, it gets harder to just keep adding weight like that. It's a lot easier in the beginning when you first start out with weight training, but you'll see as you advance, it's not going to happen as fast as it does in the beginning in terms of the load. For the sets and reps, let's say we keep the weight the same and then we get a, another rep in. Let's say one week you were only able to get 10 reps with 
those 10 pound dumbbells and then the next week you're able to get 11. Same thing with sets. If you were able to do three sets one week and then you add a set the next week, increasing the tension of a movement is let's say when we are doing a bicep curl, right? Instead of just curling up and coming back down, you're curling up and then you're waiting about three to four seconds on the way down, you're adding more tension there. It's called an eccentric. And the frequency is pretty self-explanatory. That's just when, let's say you are training three days a week and you add an extra day of training in, now you're training four days a week. Or let's say you were only training your upper body once a week and now you're doing it twice a week. So progressive overload is very important when it comes to building muscle, but what's also very important, making sure you're getting enough rest, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've seen people abuse certain exercises, like if they're trying to build their glutes or if they're trying to get abs, they'll just do like a million ab exercises or they'll train glutes every single day and that's not how your muscle is going to grow. Your muscle has to rest in order to grow because you're breaking all those tissues down when you train. So in order for them to actually be able to grow and build back up, they need rest. Make sure you're giving yourself at least a day or two off from the gym per week and also spread out the muscle groups that you train. So I specifically will do my upper body, let's say like on Monday, and then I won't train my upper body again, at least probably until like Thursday. So in terms of reps and sets, I do a mix of everything. So I'll have some low reps and medium reps, some high reps, and this all really depends on the weight that I'm using. So usually if I'm doing something that's pretty heavy, the reps are going to be lower. And if I'm doing something that's lighter, the reps are going to be higher, like especially band work. Same goes for sets. My sets really do vary as well. I'll do anywhere between two to five sets for the exercise. Usually my higher set things are going to be in the beginning of my workout because if I'm doing higher sets, Normally my reps are in the lower to moderate range. And then towards the end of my workout is usually where I'll throw in some um, higher rep things, but I won't do them for as many sets. But again, there is no straight answer when it comes to sets, reps, and everything like that. It truly is a mix of everything. The same goes for what exercises you should be doing in the gym. Like everyone always wants to know like what the secret exercise is to grow your glutes or the secret exercise to grow your back. And honestly, they all count. Sorry guys, my camera died. I was talking but there's one more thing I wanted to say before we get into the topic of getting lean the equipment now when we talk about building muscle the amount of weight you use resistance bands body weight like what should you actually do so if you are a true beginner and you have not lifted weights before, I highly recommend to start off with your body weight so that you can develop mind-muscle connection and also get the form down pad before actually adding weight. Because the worst thing you can do is add weight immediately without having proper form, and then you're going to risk injury, and you're also not going to engage your muscles properly. So start off with your body weight if you're a beginner, and then you can start adding in resistance bands and actual weights. And if you're more an intermediate, slash advanced lifter, use all three. I still use body weights, resistance bands, and weights in my training because they're all very important. Um, I use a mix of both sometimes at the same time. Like if I'm doing a squat, I will sometimes do a banded squat. So these are all different ways to, again, add more tension if you can't do an extra rep or you can't add more physical weight to the bar. These different types of resistance are also going to challenge your muscles in a different way. So it's nice to have a little bit of variety here with bands, actual weight, and using your own body weight. Now let's talk about getting lean so that this hourglass figure really stands out. So again, as I mentioned before, the amount of leanness you achieve is going to be completely up to you. And luckily, if you achieve that level of leanness that you're looking for, you can stop the process so that you don't lose any more weight. It's not like you're going to get shredded and then that's not what you wanted in the first place. So you could really take it like step by step and see what you personally like for your preference. Whether you're trying to get really lean or if you're just trying to lose five to 10 pounds to have a little more muscle definition that is visible in your physique, it's still the same process. So you still have to undergo a calorie deficit. And I have so many videos on calorie deficits where I really explain this process. And I have another video also showing you my specific results. That was actually my previous video where I shared how I lost weight two years ago. So I'm gonna link both of them for you in this description down below so you guys can head over there because a calorie deficit is mandatory. You have to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. There is no other way around this. I wish there was a very easy way to tell you like a secret that you could just 
do this one exercise or take this one pill to melt all this fat off but that's just not how it works guys your body is going to lose fat in the way that it was genetically built so we are all different we all have different genetics so i might lose more fat in my stomach compared to let's say my neighbor who might lose fat in her arms before she loses fat in her stomach so we're all very different in that sense and there is absolutely no way to change that at least as of 2020 right now with this current research that we have going on please just be patient with the process there is no way to spot reduce fat there's no way to say okay i'm gonna lose fat from my stomach but not my legs like there's just no way to do that unfortunately your body will eventually get the fat off in every single Place of your body it's just going to take time it's just going to do it in the way that it wants to do it this is especially true when it comes to your abs so remember before how i said not to overtrain a muscle and attempt to get that desired result so if you're trying to get abs don't just go doing planks three hours a day because that's not how you're going to get abs. The abdominal area is like the one area where most people really just want all their fat off and they really want to target that first and unfortunately there's just no way to do that. The only thing you can do is be in that calorie deficit, be patient, and as you lose body fat over time you are going to see your stomach go down, I promise. Personally, my midsection is also the last thing to go when it comes to fat loss so I'm totally with you guys on that if you are struggling to just get everything in here off as you lose body fat your muscle definition is going to be more apparent so that's why you are able to see your abs when your body fat is lower and the same goes for your arms your legs your back this is how your definition is able to be seen and that is because your body loses fat in the order that it wants to first so if you notice that you're getting leaner and your arms are starting to look nicer good things are happening. So don't get discouraged that your arms are changing, but your stomach isn't because it's just all part of the process. When we talk about building muscle and getting lean, they technically are on opposite sides of the spectrum, especially for someone who is more of like an intermediate to advanced lifter and is at a healthy body fat range. If that is you, then I definitely do recommend focusing on muscle growth first and then focusing on leaning out. But if you are a true beginner and you have not lifted weights before, haven't really dieted much before, and maybe you don't really have a considerably healthy body fat percentage right now, then I would consider doing both at the same time because your body is probably going to respond very well to it because this is a new stimulus for you. Um, however, for the people that have been lifting for quite some time and who have already done multiple cuts before, it's going to be a little harder to gain muscle and lose fat at the exact same time. So that's why I would recommend having two different phases, a muscle building phase and then also a cut phase. During your muscle building phase, you don't have to eat that many calories in order to build muscle. I know that's a very like common myth that you have to like legitimately bulk up to build muscle and that's not true. You can actually eat at maintenance or a little bit above maintenance. I would actually recommend starting at your maintenance calories and then working your way up from there. And then when you're trying to lean out a little bit, again, start at your maintenance calories and then slowly lower them over time. For both phases, you still want to make sure you're eating enough protein when you're building muscle and you also want to make sure you're eating enough protein when you're trying to lose fat. The way that you train is also going to stay the same whether you are building muscle or you're trying to lose fat because when we talked about progressive overload before when we were trying to build muscle, when we're trying to lose fat now, we want to maintain that muscle, right? We don't want that muscle to just go away after we spent so much time building it. We want to maintain that muscle. So the same things that you did to build your muscle are going to be the same things you're going to want to do to maintain it. So you're still going to want to push yourself in the gym in terms of the load, the sets, the reps, the frequency, the time under tension, like those things still matter and you still need to train the same when you are in a cut. The only thing that's really gonna change is the amount you're actually able to do. Maybe heavy for you when you were trying to build muscle was let's say 135 on a squat. And then when you're cutting, you're probably not gonna be able to hit 135 at a certain point because you're just going to lose a little bit of strength and you're going to be a little more tired in the gym. You're gonna experience more fatigue. So um, those are all, some of the beautiful cons that come with cutting by the way so technically the weight that you were able to do when you were building muscle and now trying to lose fat isn't going to be the exact same but the mindset has to be the same so you have to go into the gym still trying to push yourself doing the best that you can even if you can't hit that 135 that you used to be able to hit when you were building muscle you still have to try and come close to that at least try to come close to that because that's what's going to help you again maintain your muscle when you're cutting the last thing i want to leave you guys with for today is that there are no quick fixes for an hourglass shape okay there is no way for you to just 
get your waist snatched in two days to get abs in two weeks or to just grow your legs and grow your lats immediately. Like this stuff really takes time because you're doing it the healthy, natural way. You're going to see results pretty quickly if you be consistent, but the whole transformation is not going to happen overnight. So you have to really celebrate small wins too. So if you notice that your back is starting to get more defined or that your legs are starting to get a little more sculpted and your stomach is getting leaner, like these are all things that you need to celebrate within yourself. I always have my clients write out in their check-in what their biggest win for the week was because we have to celebrate these things, okay? If you're constantly looking in the mirror and you're just only searching for the big transformation, you're going to get really discouraged and you're also going to overlook all of these small changes that are happening. So that's why I always recommend telling you guys to take photos, look at your weight, take measurements, try on different types of clothes because that's when you're going to know your body is actually changing. Please give this video a like. I really appreciate all your support on my channel as I am trying to get this content to reach more and more people to help them with their fitness journey. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see future videos. I'm trying to upload twice a week during quarantine. I've been pretty damn consistent with it. So I will catch you guys in the next video.